Right now, alert days ahead. Bone chilling cold is back in the forecast, and Dana is tracking some single digit temperatures and snow heading into the work week. And after a tough loss to the Buckeyes overnight, the Badgers are bowl bound. But where? The latest predictions this morning. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning. It's 6.30 in the morning on December 8th. I'm Keely Arthur in with meteorologist Dana Fulton. Great to have you, Dana. I love mornings, so this is perfect. This is You do love mornings? Yes. And I'm, you work nights normally, right? Normally, yes. So okay. it was a little bit of a switch to have the alarm going off. Yes. Uh, but coffee, we're fine. We're all good to go. Uh, thankfully, uh, things are going to stay pretty mild today. But as we look ahead through the next few days, we do have a bit of an active weather pattern. Right now, of course, we're waiting for sunrise just around the corner. Still mostly cloudy outside, and we are going to stay mostly cloudy today. It's still very windy outside. Wind speeds in the teens around 21 miles per hour though towards Monroe. So plan on a windy start to your day. Temperatures climb to the mid 40s this afternoon. Enjoy it because cold air is really going to move in. We're talking about some light snowfall for Monday and then very cold temperatures for Tuesday and Wednesday. But we'll take a closer look at those snow accumulations uh, heading into the start of the work week for your Monday. I mean, yeah, it's been so mild. I feel like it'll be quite the shock to the system when yeah, we do get to yeah. those temperatures. We're going to have to wake up early Tuesday morning and definitely need those extra layers okay. for the middle of the week. Yeah. Thank you, Dana. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, the Badgers bid to win their first Big Ten championship since 2012 came to a bit of an end last night. Wisconsin lost to top ranked Ohio State 34 to 21. So what went wrong for the Badgers? Kevin Lewis wraps up our coverage from Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis. It didn't even look like the same Wisconsin team in the second half. Running back Jonathan Taylor rushed for 135 yards in the first half, 13 in the second. Jack Cohn rushed for a pair of touchdowns and was efficient through the air in the first half. Couldn't get anything going in the second. And the Badgers defense that sacked Justin Fields three times and forced a fumble in the first half stayed in the locker room. Now, Ohio State took momentum over in the third quarter when they scored on their first possession coming out of halftime. They also got points off of a botched punt and missed field goal by Wisconsin, scoring on five straight possessions of 75, 16, 69, 65, and 67 yards while playing solid defense and shutting the Badgers out in the third and fourth quarter. It's a game of momentum, and Paul Chris's team didn't have any in the second half. Yeah, that's the game of football, you know, and, and uh, what is momentum? It's making plays, right? And, and they did a good job in the opening their opening drive of the second half, and, and you know, I'm pretty sure in that one we had them kind of, you know, they had a big play, you know, had some opportunities. It's a good football team, right? And it's, uh, I mean, football's always a game of momentum, and you got to, how do you get momentum back? It's executing, and, and uh, you know, they executed better than we did on, on enough plays to make the difference. I had a lot of confidence coming out of the locker room in the, for the second half um, as they started. Uh, moving the ball and stopping us on offense and um, whatnot um, kind of started to deflate, um, but, but we never lost. We never lost it. Um, I feel like uh, we played well enough to win that game in the first half and just didn't finish it. Bond told me he's proud of what this team has accomplished given where they were at the end of October when a lot of people left the Badgers for dead. Now they wait for their bowl fate, which will be announced this afternoon. At Lucas Oil Stadium, I'm Kevin Lewis. News 3 Now this morning. All right, thank you, Kevin. Ohio State is now a lock for the national championship playoff. But where are the Badgers headed? Well, after taking into consideration yesterday's wins and losses, CBS Sports projects the team will still make it to the Rose Bowl. The bowl game selection show begins at 11 this morning. The Badgers women's volleyball team is in the postseason as well, and now they're headed to the Sweet 16. Wisconsin faced UCLA Saturday, taking sets one, two, and three for the sweep. That means they'll host again next weekend, facing 13 seed Texas A&M at the Fieldhouse. And it was a good night for the Badger men's basketball team, too, opening up the Big Ten schedule with a win against Indiana. Lacrosse native Kobe King helped the Badgers up early and put up a career-high 24 points to beat the Hoosiers. 84-64 to 64 was the final score. The team heads to Rutgers on Wednesday. 
We are following some developing news out of Rock County this morning, where the Rock County Sheriff's Department is investigating a shots fired incident outside of Janesville. Officials say the call came in overnight along South Highway 51 in the town of Rock around 8.20 p.m. According to police, the person who called said they heard gunshots and saw a white Tahoe slow down while driving on the highway. The caller also said a person climbed onto the side of the car. The car then drove north on Highway 51. Police were able to determine that the person who jumped onto the Tahoe was a man with a gunshot wound to his upper left leg. He was dropped off near the entrance to Mercy Hospital in Janesville, but police say he never went inside. Deputies found six shell casings in the area. They are continuing their investigation today. More local news now. Four people are in custody in Rock County after a person allegedly pulled a gun on a group of people early Saturday morning. Beloit police responded to the 900 block of 4th Street around 1230 for a report of a person with a gun. A car that matched the description given to police drove away, starting a chase through Beloit and South Beloit. Police say the car eventually hit a squad car just off Highway 75. Now, four people were arrested, including two teenage boys, along with 19-year-old Alexa Torres, who is facing charges in Illinois for driving when the car hit the squad car. 26-year-old Donta Evans Pound was taken into custody for possession with intent to deliver cocaine and marijuana. You might have seen a lot of police along Carpenter Street on Madison's east side overnight as officers responded to a call for a possible explosive. Police tell us it turned out to be an old training missile with no charge. They took precautions and removed it from the area. They say there was thankfully no threat to the public. The impeachment inquiry will continue tomorrow morning. The House Judiciary Committee will focus on the findings of the Intelligence Committee's two-month-long investigation. Articles of impeachment could be drafted as soon as this week. Now, the White House has announced its lawyers will not participate in the hearing. Meanwhile, the legal fight for President Trump's financial records is on hold. Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg put a temporary hold on House subpoenas for documents from two banks. She ordered the House to respond to the president's request to block the subpoenas. The House has until this Wednesday, December 11th, to respond. The court also said a lower court ruling against the president has been put on hold. That ruling ordered documents from the banks to be turned over. The lower court's ruling is on hold until next Friday. The U.S. Navy's newest aircraft carrier was christened in Virginia this weekend. The USS John F. Kennedy is the second aircraft of the Gerald Ford class. It has been designed to carry and fly more planes with fewer sailors. It will replace the USS Nimitz when the ship is decommissioned. Officials hope to deliver the ship to the Navy by 2022. Well, from ships to shipping, postal carriers are predicting this will be their busiest holiday season yet for online orders. Staff members at the UPS store in Middleton estimate 750 million packages will be delivered just through UPS alone this season. What makes this even more challenging is that online shopping is becoming more and more popular, and this is the first time in seven years that Thanksgiving and Christmas have been so tightly packed together. So they're trying to get more done in less time. We're gonna get everything in the system to the best of our ability, but trucks only have so much space. There's only so much real estate within those trucks to be able to actually send everything through. Some things are gonna some things are going to just take a little bit longer and get delayed. There's, that's just how the logistical facts of it with how many more packages there are this time of year. To make sure your packages are delivered to their destination, they urge you to require signatures on your packages. They've seen millions of packages already stolen. Wow. It is 639 right now. If you have any plans to do in-person shopping today, may be a good bet. Here is a live look outside. Dana is tracking three alert days and lots of cold and your full first alert forecast just ahead.
Well, the work week does hold a lot, but at least for today, you can plan on mild temperatures. A lot of cloud coverage, though, expected this afternoon. We'll stay mostly cloudy. High temperatures will be in the mid 40s. And then we start talking about colder trends heading towards the start of the week. Monday is an alert day. We're going to start with a little bit of rain that's going to mix with some light snowfall later in the afternoon and evening. That mixed precipitation will be impacting your evening commute. Anytime we have any precipitation falling uh, during our commute hours, during our rush hours, Things always tend to slow down a little bit, so some light snow mixing on in. Not really a good thing for later in the day. Notice, though, our snowfall totals really not expecting much towards Janesville and Beloit. Might see some trace amounts around Madison, less than an inch expected. And then areas to the north, once you get closer to Camp Douglas and north of the Dells, might get a little bit over an inch, but you've really got to travel far north to see the heaviest impacts from this snow coming on through. A southern breeze for us right now. It is a little windy outside to start off the day. And then for Sunday afternoon, uh, we have the cloud coverage really staying with us throughout the day. Light showers will develop at night. Only a slight chance for some drizzle this evening, but really not expecting much. The showers continue into tomorrow morning, so your commute early in the day also going to be wet, but that'll be just rain as temperatures will be well above freezing early in the day and then will steadily fall through the afternoon as the system passes on over. By early afternoon, we have a little mixed precipitation coming down, a lighter snow trending to the north and west, and then that snow uh, dips a little further south. Again, not a lot coming on down, but just enough that the roads will likely be a little slick outside. Not a lot of impacts with this Monday event. Minor for driving and walking. Uh, clearing out any snow shouldn't be an issue. You shouldn't have to plan ahead for that. The snow gets done for Monday evening, and then we fall into a very cold trend for Tuesday and Wednesday. So temperatures today will be in the mid 40s. Monday will be in the upper 30s early in the day, and then we fall during the afternoon. Alert day for Tuesday and Wednesday because high temperatures temperatures will be in the teens almost half of what our actual average highs should be single digit lows for both mornings and then we are looking at sunshine at least for the next several days uh, shower chances with some light snow developing heading into the weekend but that doesn't look like a major accumulating event either we get through the light snow and then we're really gonna have to bundle up Keely because it's gonna be a little cold outside and I feel like it's un been unseasonably kind of warm and we now have, yeah we've had it several days actually where we've actually been above average and we haven't been above average for a while so we got no. to enjoy that for a little bit but but falling down to the single digits it's a little too early for that right now a little all over the place all yes. right thank you for tracking all that Dana mm -hmm. Well, if you have any outdoor plans this weekend, this is your reminder to download our Channel 3000 weather and traffic app. You'll be the first to know when weather that will affect your day is headed your way with the most up-to-date and accurate weather conditions. You can get it for free in your app store. Time right now, 645. More than 4,000 stores inside malls across the country closed just this year. So when one company announced plans to open one that rivals only the Mall of America, many people called them crazy. But once you see it for yourself, you might understand why they did it. We're heading inside the American dream next on News 3 Now this morning, Sunday.
mild temperatures today, but coming up next, it gets a little cold outside. Chance for some light snow developing Monday. We won't have a lot of accumulation around Madison. Those totals will really stay under an inch, but if you travel to the north, those totals will climb pretty quickly around the Dells, about an inch and a quarter, and then we see heavier amounts well north of that. For Tuesday and Wednesday, our alert days are due to the cold, cold air that will be moving on in. High temperatures will be in the teens with our overnight lows in the single digits. Wind chills for early in the morning will fall well below zero for both days. At least we get the sunshine back though. For Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, we'll have partly sunny skies and then we'll keep an eye on our next opportunity for rain and snow heading into the following weekend. Thank you, Dana. Right now, malls across the country are packed with holiday shoppers, but all this activity covers a relentless trend in retail. The mall is in steep decline. According to Bank of America, almost 1,700 stores inside malls closed in 2018. So far this year, closings have reached more than 4,000. But one company believes they found a way to reverse the trend. Nikki Batiste explains. These are the faces of one fearless family. Dropping straight down 141 feet at more than 62 miles per hour on the Shell Razor, a star attraction at the brand new American Dream. CEO Don Germizian took me up, up, and around America's newest playland. My office is cousin, 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 brother, 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 father, 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 father. Germizian and his very large family, all 30 of them, are the innovators behind this new, well, what should we call it? You don't like to call American Dream a mall, so what do you call it? It's an experiential center. It's someplace where you can go and do just about anything you could possibly imagine. In a time when malls are dying, are you worried at all? No, we've done it before. This is the same family-run company, Triple Five Group, behind Minnesota's famed Mall of America and Canada's West Edmonton Mall. They both offer 75% retail and 25% entertainment, but American Dream offers about 50% of each. If you think about it for a second, retail, it's not a secret. It's been a struggle. It's a struggle everywhere, right? You're not deterred by that? No, we're not deterred by it at all. I think that, you know, great, tourist, retail, mega centers like this, there's always going to be need for them. American Dream cost about $6 billion to build and spans almost 70 acres. That's about 53 football fields. Germizian says it boasts the largest indoor amusement park in the Western Hemisphere, with five roller coasters and over 30 rides and attractions. <laughs> With more on the way, there's also the world's biggest indoor wave pool, an ice skating rink, and, believe it or not, a year-round ski slope. But this project hasn't always been a smooth ride. It's taken 15 years to build, gone through several owners, survived the 2008 financial crisis, and was a much less grand plan when the Gramesians took the reins in 2011. Since its conception, the mega center has caused major concerns for its neighbors. It definitely will create a nightmare for this city. It definitely will. Michael Ganelli is the mayor of Secaucus, the town millions of visitors are expected to travel through to reach American Dream. My main concern is traffic. My main concern is how it looks, because we're the only municipality in the entire district that actually looks at it. In 2004, the New Jersey Sports and Exposition Authority, which controls the land on which American Dream sits, agreed to make payments to the surrounding towns to ease the inevitable rising costs. And with money, you can hire more law enforcement officers, traffic controllers. That's the number one problem. Does the potential boost to the economy outweigh the concerns about traffic and that it may be an eyesore? It sort of does because the economy will be boosted greatly. Um, but, you know, we still have to really address each item. And traffic, the eyesore is something, I don't know how we can address that. And the boost in the economy is great, but you still have to address all three. Two sections of American Dream opened on October 25th and curious crowds have started to visit. But according to Mayor Ganelli, his town has yet to receive any money to help with the increase in visitors. When we asked American Dream if they knew where the money was, they said they're not able to comment at this time. What do you say to that and his frustration and the disparity? I think once they realize, and I think he does realize, what we've created in value for Secaucus, I mean, you've got... Jobs. Jobs. And at the end of the day, isn't that what it's almost all about? 
Gurmesian argues that this retail entertainment wonderland will not only attract area residents, but also draw tourists visiting New York City 10 miles away. And where we're standing, what will we see here? We're going to see luxury here and an incredible, incredible lineup of the best luxury brands in the world. And then you have the luxury brands, but you also have more cost-friendly retail as well. Yes. Century 21, H&M. That's right. Getting customers into those stores and out of cyberspace is part of the job of marketing senior vice president Debbie Petiri. You can't experience Nickelodeon Universe online. You can't experience DreamWorks Water Park online. You can't take your first ski lesson online, right? To help you get around, there are interactive directories, and soon you can have their app on your phone. We have what we call the social responders. So I can just message on my phone on the app. Where's the ice skating rink? Yes, and or, we'll be where able do to I get coffee. Yes, and we'll be able to guide you. The Gramesian family is banking on their grand idea. So much so, they've put up over 40% of Mall of America and West Edmonton Mall as collateral. What do you expect the profits to be? A lot. Like. <laughs> Uh, how many people are watching this show? When do you think you might break even? <laughs> I think that we'll break even right at year one. A money milestone that many will be watching, including retail analyst Marshall Cohen. It's no longer about retail first, it's now about entertainment first and retail fitting in. He says if American Dream is a financial flop, a lot of people will feel it. The first ones to get to feel the pain if the mall doesn't succeed is certainly going to be the investors. But don't rule out the taxpayers and the municipalities if they don't get those tax payments. But Don Germesian isn't losing any sleep over cash concerns. He's already dreaming up his next big idea. What keeps you up at night? You have to be a little bit worried. What keeps me up at night is thinking about what's the next crazy thing that we're going to put in here that's going to blow everybody away. That's what's kept me up for the last eight years, and we've delivered. There's a full hour of News 3 this morning ahead. Next, we're running through the day's top stories, including bowl predictions for our Badgers after a tough loss overnight. But first, here's a preview of what's to come on an all-new For the Record. Good morning, everybody. I'm Neil Hyden. Today on For the Record, we will look back at Madison Mayor Satya Rhodes Conway's first year in office, including her first budget, her accomplishments, and her view forward entering 2020. My guest is Madison Mayor Satya Rhodes Conway, and that's coming up this morning at 10.30 on News 3 Now.
Researchers are hoping to use the active ingredients in magic mushrooms to heal chronic depression. The News 3 Now exclusive is just ahead. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning, it's December 8th. I'm Keely Artha. We'll have some more on your Badgers and your First Alert forecast in just a moment. But first, here are three things to start your day. The Rock County Sheriff's Department is releasing new information this morning about their shots fired investigation that started overnight. Officials say the call came in along South Highway 51 in the town of Rock around 8.20 p.m. Saturday. According to police, the person who called said they heard gunshots and saw a white Tahoe slow down while driving on Highway 51. The caller also said a person climbed onto the side of the car. Police were able to determine that the person who jumped onto the Tahoe was a man with a gunshot wound to his left leg. He was dropped off near the entrance of Mercy Hospital in Janesville, but police say he never went inside. Deputies found six shell casings nearby. You might have seen a lot of police along Carpenter Street on Madison's east side overnight as officers responded to a call for a possible explosive. Police tell us it turned out to be an old training missile with thankfully no charge. They took precautions and removed it from the area, though. Thankfully, no one was hurt. Postal carriers are predicting this will be their busiest holiday season yet for online orders. Staff members at the UPS store in Middleton estimate 750 million package will be delivered through just UPS alone this season. What makes this even more challenging is that online shopping is becoming more and more popular and this is the first time in seven years that Thanksgiving and Christmas have been so tightly packed together. So they're trying to get more done in less time to make sure your packages are delivered to their destination. They urge you to require signatures on your packages. And we're going to turn it over to Dana Fulton. Dana, Dana, it might be a nice day to go shopping outside. It might be, yes. If you do have to head outdoors at all today, a mild day, some clouds hanging out, but otherwise things don't look too bad. In fact, sunrise just a little bit ago, starting to get a little bit of light outside, but you can see how cloudy it is, and that's how we're going to stay this morning. Uh, overall, temperatures will be in a good spot. It's just really windy outside to start your day. Overall, those wind speeds are in the teens. We're seeing it slowing down a little bit along the western edge of the state, and that'll continue through the afternoon. Our winds diminishing this afternoon. Temperatures climb to the mid 40s, so a mild day and Enjoy it because some very, very cold air moves in for the middle of the week. Tomorrow we have an alert day in the forecast for some light snow that will be impacting your evening commute. Not a lot of accumulation, but enough that the roads might be a little slick. For Tuesday and Wednesday, temperatures are going to fall back to the teens for afternoon highs and in the single digits for our overnight low temperatures. We'll take a closer look at what's ahead for the work week in just a few minutes. Oh, no. Lots <laughs> of layers. All right. Thank yes. you, Dana. The Badgers' bid to win their first Big Ten championship since 2012 came to an end last night. Wisconsin lost to top-ranked Ohio State 34-21. So what went wrong for the Badgers? Kevin Lewis explains. It didn't even look like the same Wisconsin team in the second half. Running back Jonathan Taylor rushed for 135 yards in the first half, 13 in the second. Jack Cohn rushed for a pair of touchdowns and was efficient through the air in the first half. Couldn't get anything going in the second. And the Badgers defense that sacked Justin Fields three times and forced a fumble in the first half stayed in the locker room. Now, Ohio State took momentum over in the third quarter when they scored on their first possession coming out of halftime. They also got points off of a botched punt and missed field goal by Wisconsin, scoring on five straight possessions of 75, 16, 69, 65, and 67 yards while playing solid defense and shutting the Badgers out in the third and fourth quarter. It's a game of momentum, and Paul Chris's team didn't have any in the second half. Yeah, that's the game of football, you know, and, and uh, what is momentum? It's making plays, right? And and they did a good job in the opening, their opening drive of the second half, and, and, you know, I'm pretty sure in that one we had them kind of, you know, they had a big play, you know, had some opportunities. It's a good football team, right? And it's, uh, I mean, football's always a game of momentum, and you got to, how do you get momentum back? It's executing, and, and uh, you know they executed better than we did on, on enough plays to make the difference. Had a lot of confidence coming out of the locker room in the, for the second half. Um, as they started uh, moving the ball and stopping us on offense and um, whatnot, um, kind of started to deflate. 
um, but, but we never lost. We never lost it. Um, I feel like uh, we played well enough to win that game in the first half and just didn't finish it. Bond told me he's proud of what this team has accomplished given where they were at the end of October when a lot of people left the Badgers for dead. Now they wait for their bowl fate, which will be announced this afternoon. At Lucas Oil Stadium, I'm Kevin Lewis. News 3 Now this morning. Thanks, Kevin. So Ohio State is now a lock for the national championship playoff, but where are our Badgers headed? After taking into consideration yesterday's wins and losses, CBS Sports projects the team will still make it to the Rose Bowl. The bowl game selection show begins at 11 this morning. The Badger women's volleyball team is in the postseason as well, and now they're headed to the Sweet 16. Wisconsin faced UCLA Saturday, taking sets one, two, and three for the sweep. That means they'll host again next weekend, facing 13 seed Texas A&M at the Fieldhouse. It was also a good night for the Badgers men's basketball team, opening up the Big Ten schedule with a win against Indiana. Lacrosse native Kobe King helped get the Badgers up early and put up a career high. 24 points to beat the Hoosiers. 84 to 64 was the final score. The team heads to Rutgers on Wednesday. Well, more than 300 million people suffer from depression worldwide. It's considered to be one of the most emotionally painful experiences anyone can go through, but the FDA recently approved a study to test what could be a breakthrough drug right here in Madison. Only News 3 Now's Jamie Perez has the story. So this is the first step. For researchers at the USONA Institute, this is just another day in the lab. So I'm reacting that acyl chloride, dimethylamine. But they're making a substance that could change the medical field. We're kind of building the psilocybin molecule from the ground up. Psilocybin, the active ingredient in magic mushrooms. You may be wondering, how can this lab-made yellow substance help heal depression? You know, it's one of the most fascinating questions in the human world right now. Charles Rayson with the USONA Institute is on a journey to find out. I think right now the evidence suggests that a, a single treatment or two treatments of psilocybin in many people uh, will have a benefit that will last at least several months and maybe longer. Just ask Diane Byler. I was 50 before I <laughs> did any of this. She's a former subject in a previous psilocybin study done at UW-Madison and formerly a skeptic of mind-altering drugs. My brother and and I, I saw other people experiment with some of that stuff and just that just wasn't for me. <laughs> Byler signed up to be a part of a psilocybin study for healthy adults in 2015 after dealing with some mental struggles. My mom had passed away earlier that year and I was actually in the process of a divorce too at the time. In an attempt to heal herself from within. There was an eight hour music playlist that they played each time. So it was the same music each time and I put on um, headphones and eye shades and just went in. <laughs> Byler went on a journey that she said changed her life forever. Ultimately boiled down to interconnectedness and love and oneness and wholeness. As she lay here for eight hours on her journey, she wondered the same thing that researchers are seeking answers to today. What about that could possibly be so powerful that people feel changed a month later, two months later, three months later? And the short answer is we don't know for sure, but the data to date suggests that it is the quality of the experience that's induced acutely in that six hour psychedelic window that really predicts how people do long term. Would you say that this could help people who are depressed? Absolutely. To actually feel it and process it, they say the way out is through. So instead of just stuffing it down to actually have a safe place to process whatever it is they need to process. For Rayson, this isn't about doing drugs in your backyard. It's about real, powerful medical experiences to heal one of the most emotionally crippling diseases so many of us face. The difficult experiences are often difficult in a way that helps people begin to face the experiences, resolve the experiences, get a different perspective on the experiences. Raison said the drive to get treatment from depression is profound, and his team of researchers. That yellow color is going to start to disappear. We're testing something that could eventually treat other mental health conditions. There are studies now suggesting it may help people quit smoking. There are studies suggesting that it may help people um, get some relief from alcohol dependence. There are studies suggesting it may be helpful for people that have obsessive compulsive disorder, which is a very difficult condition to treat psychiatrically. Until the FDA approves psilocybin as a legitimate treatment, Raison is hopeful 
that this actually works. If the data hold true, this is a revolution in mental health. In Madison, I'm Jamie Perez, News 3 Now. So right now, they are in the screening process to find 80 people to participate in this study. Several other studies still need to be done before this can really hit the market. For more information on this or to find out if you qualify to participate, we have a link up on our website. Well, still ahead, we are celebrating the career of a well-known member of the News 3 Now team who is retiring this weekend. A look at what will become Jay Wilson's lasting legacy here in Madison. But first, here's a live look out Outside. Dana is tracking your first alert forecast next. Good morning. The light just starting to come up, but you can certainly see the cloud coverage still. We're in for a mostly cloudy day with mild temperatures. Enjoy the temps this afternoon because it's going to get much colder outside as we head through the work week. Here's a live look again from downtown. Temperatures currently in the mid 30s will climb to the mid 40s for afternoon highs with that mostly cloudy sky. It'll be quite a bit above average, so enjoy 44 before the cooler air moves in. For Monday, we are expecting some light snowfall to develop in the afternoon. We start off with rain in the morning, then it transitions over to light snow. Notice we aren't going to pick up a lot of accumulation. The heaviest amounts will be well north of Dane County. Around Madison, we might see up to an inch, but most of the air seeing well below that and along the state line for Janesville and Beloit just trace amounts of snow. So a mostly cloudy sky today. This breeze coming from the southwest right now. It's going to help our temperatures climb into the mid 40s. Slight chance for some light drizzle this afternoon. Most of the rain chance develops overnight. And we'll continue to see light showers to start off the day on Monday. Light rain transitions over to light snowfall early in the afternoon 
It will stay mostly cloudy throughout the afternoon on Monday with this light snow tapering off in the evening. Again, not expecting a lot to come on through, but any precipitation coming down during rush hour can always slow things down. So we should have minor effects to your driving. Walking on ice shouldn't be too much of an issue, and thankfully you don't have to break out the shovel for this snowfall for Monday. Temperatures again mid 40s today. Monday we're closer to average in the upper 30s for afternoon highs. The alert day is due to the impacts to your evening commute specifically. And then once we get through that event, it cools down quite a bit. Tuesday and Wednesday we'll see afternoon highs in the teens with overnight lows in the single digits. Our wind chills will be well below zero to start off Wednesday and Thursday morning. So very, very cold starts to the day. Don't let the sunshine deceive you because we will have partly sunny skies for Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Temps rebound towards the end of the week. We're into the 30s for Friday and the weekend, but our next opportunity for some light rain or snow will develop for Friday and Saturday with our next system coming through. That's a quick look at your forecast. And Dana, I know you're saying a slight wintry mix maybe overnight, but in terms of the Monday morning commute, things should be fine. Monday morning, we will have those light rain showers coming through. If you're well, well north of Madison towards Camp Douglas or the Dells, we might have some light snow mixing in, uh, but we're not concerned about snowfall coming through for the morning commute, Keely. It's not right. uh, going to be Phew. a morning issue. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh -huh. Well, we've been asking you to share your morning with us. Oh, I wish the season looked like this right now. Thank you so much for sending this in, Chris. What does your morning look like? Probably much colder. You can take a picture and post it on the Channel 3000 Facebook page or on Twitter using the hashtag MyNews3Morning. We will share our favorites right here on the show. And remind, remember, you can get into the Christmas spirit with a Christmas Carol live this weekend at the Overture Center's Capitol Theater. The play features the classic story of Ebenezer Scrooge. There is a 2.30 show today and more performances for the next two weekends as well. For show times and ticket information, you can head to overture.org. If you're looking for a unique Christmas gift or just some new decorations for the house, head over to the 10th Annual Crafty Fair at the Goodman Community Center and next door at Brassworks. The fair continues from 10 until 2 today. For more information, you can go to craftyfair.org. We have some bittersweet news for us here at News 3 Now. This weekend's Big Ten Championship game is sports director Jay Wilson's very last assignment for us. We've been lucky enough to have Jay for the past 11 years, but his impact in the Madison sports community really extends far beyond that. Mark Kane shows us how. It is a career that spanned nearly 40 years and took Jay to the front row of some of the state's biggest sports stories. For Jay, it was a dream come true. Well, you know, growing up, I used to watch a lot of sports on TV. I read the sports page in the newspaper every day, and I listened to about five baseball games a night on the radio. And my mom always said, Jay, don't pay so much attention to sports because you're never going to make a living at it. But he made his mother proud. Channel 27 sports director Mars Shapiro hired Jay right after he graduated from the UW Journalism School in 1980 as the weekend sportscaster. He became known as the Dean of Madison Television Sports, covering the local high school scene and the Badger football team's rise in prominence that led to the 1994 Rose Bowl. Coach Alvarez, here's Barry Alvarez, ladies and gentlemen. Dad, I'm gonna, doing this with you, Jay. You know, we got a really thing going here. This is nice. I like meeting you like this. During those years, Jay was also the play-by-play -play voice for the state basketball tournaments. But in 2006, Jay decided the rigors of local television had taken their toll and he retired from WKOW. For a couple of years, he was a reporter for the Big Ten Network and Fox Sports Wisconsin. But WISC was fortunate to lure Jay back in 2008. He became sports director and joined the anchor teams at 6 and 10, a role that took him coast to coast, covering a Super Bowl, two Final Four bids, and a number of bowl games, including the granddaddy of them all. It's almost time, time for the 97th Rose Bowl game between the Wisconsin Badgers and the TCU Horn Frog. Jay continued his passion for local sports coverage, leading the station efforts on prep mania, football and basketball games. Jay's been honored to be inducted into the Wisconsin Football Coaches Association, the Wisconsin Basketball Coaches Association, and the Chicago Academy of Arts and Sciences Silver Circle Award for his lifetime achievement in local broadcasting. For all of this, we salute Jay Wilson, Dean of Madison TV Sports, as he prepares for his next step in a storied career. It really always has been a pleasure working with Jay. 
Well, coming up next, it's the holiday shopping season. And if you're looking for a unique gift for a nature loving friend or family member, listen up. Lord Stephen is in the studio this morning with the special title you can bestow upon them for any budget. We'll talk with him right after the break. Today is going to be mild outside, but as we look ahead to the start of your work week, know that things are going to be a little more active. Some light snow developing heading into your Monday. We'll start off with rain early, but then the light snow coming in in the afternoon. Not a lot of accumulation, though. Less than an inch expected. Very cold temperatures for Tuesday and Wednesday. Temps will fall back to the teens for afternoon highs with overnight lows in the single digits with those wind chills below zero. So it'll be quite cool outside. Enjoy today, even though it is going to be cloudy. We will be in the mid 40s for afternoon highs. That's a quick look at your forecast. All right, thank you, Dana. Well, if you're looking for a unique gift this holiday season, listen up. Highland Titles, one of the world's leading innovators in land preservation, is offering an eco-friendly opportunity to buy plots of land in Scotland. The catch is that if you buy the land, you can legally bestow the Scottish title of Lord or Lady upon your friends or family members. Lord Stephen Rossiter joins us this morning to explain. Well, so, good morning. Good morning to you. This thank is you very wonderful. much for Christina, inviting me. 
our producer always books some fun guests, but I have yes. to say I'm pretty excited Are about you? this one. <laughs> so explain to me what exactly well, this is. Well, you did really well just then explaining the whole thing. Effectively, Highland Titles is a conservation organisation. We've been going for 10 years, and the way that we have funded the building of our nature reserves is through the selling of square foot plots. Now, in Scotland, when you own land, you're described as a laird, which means landowner. This tends to be used by people who just who own vast estates. Uh, but there's no reason why, if you just own a one square foot plot, that you can't, as you say, call yourself Lord Lady. It's just a courtesy title, because Lord or Lady is the English translation of laird. So as the unique gift that we offer for people, you get to scratch around thinking, what am I going to buy this this year? You know? yeah. So you can buy, it's uh, just it's $45, and you can buy a one square foot plot of land on our nature reserve, and all the profits go towards the upkeep and running of the reserve. And you get everything in a really nice gift pack, just like this. Very fun. And what I've done today for you is I am going to bestow upon you... <laughs> oh, my goodness. ...your very own one square foot plot. So there you, you can now oh. be officially known as Lady Kelly Keely Arthur. Oh Keely my goodness. Arthur, That's indeed. how I want to be referred to at the station from here on out. Absolutely. No. <laughs> you should be. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh my goodness. And I see it all comes in a gift bag and there's lots of explanations there. You have a sticker about, oh, the, little about the reserve. I'm a lady sticker. Yeah, I love you say that. you're a lady. Look um. at that. Look at that. Yes. There you go. So cute. Thank Everything you so there. much. Look. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm a lady. I love it. This is a really fun gift. I mean, especially I think people are so interested in the royals right now and everything like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. I yeah. mean, this isn't going to get you any invitation to any royal wedding, <laughs> yes. I'm afraid. But, oh, okay. <laughs> but it, it does. I mean, for instance, I've managed to put it on my uh, credit card, but you can't put it on passports or oh, that's driving so funny. licenses. <laughs> it, it basically replaces Mr. Miss or Mrs. Uh, in your life. But it's great to have on show in the house when your neighbours come around, you know. Yeah. You know, and just that one that, upmanship that we say. I know people can buy these titles but you said it's all about land conservation. It's all about land conservation and over the last 10 years we've seen the rehabilitation of animals now into Scotland because we've taken out all the Sitka spruce, all the dense trees that were there. We've been replanting the native broadleaf Scottish trees. That's seen uh, the reintroduction of the, of the red squirrel that hasn't been seen in the area for lots of times. The badgers now come back. We've got lots of footage. If you go to our Facebook page or on our website, we've got lots of uh, video footage of camera shots of all the Wonderful. different animals that well, you can see. Yeah, and we love badgers here in Wisconsin. That's there you go. our mascot. Yeah, um, there you so, are. I mean, great shots this of that. is really drawn a lot of interest to Scotland in a way. I mean, where have people purchased these titles from well, around we, the world, right? We, absolutely. We've got thousands thousands and thousands of people now around the world who've purchased this and we get up to 10,000 visitors a year now to the nature reserve it's been awarded a four-star visitors attraction from visit scotland um, we're right up in the sort of northwest of scotland so you go from glasgow it's about a two and a half hour drive in the glencoe region and uh, when you come you can have a guided tour if you want a guided tour we do a one hour tour of the whole reserve and we'll take you to your plot and that's what people do they arrange their whole vacation around coming to see their one square foot plot oh, it's so quite fun. good and it's only 45 dollars it is quite good thank good. you so much that's lord right. Stephen. go to highland titles it's getting cold i keep hearing the weather is going to get cold <laughs> yeah. so because you're now a lady of glencoe you get to wear the official highland titles tartan oh my so goodness for you there is I, to keep you right. warm a lambshell <laughs> scarf. <laughs> this is a great assignment. Thank you so much. Thank Lord you for Steven. inviting me. Okay. Great fun. Well, remember, there's still a half hour of news ahead on News 3 Now this morning. Sunday next, we are running through the morning's top stories. And going to a restaurant in a hotel might not be your first choice when dining out, but you might want to consider this new restaurant inside the downtown Hilton. Our tastemaker checks out the new Audrey Kitchen and Bar when News 3 Now this morning. Sunday continues.
From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning, it's December 8th. I'm Keely Arthur. We'll get a check on weather with Dana in just a second, but first here are three things that you need to know as you start your day. It wasn't just a bad dream, Badger fans. Wisconsin's bid to win their first Big Ten championship since 2012 came to an end overnight. The Badgers lost to top-ranked Ohio State 34 to 21. Now it's a waiting game to find out which bowl the team is headed to. And after taking into consideration yesterday's wins and losses, CBS Sports projects the team will still make it to the Rose Bowl. We'll get the official announcement during the four hour long bowl game selection show that starts at 11 this morning. The Badger women's volleyball team is in the postseason as well, and now they're headed to the Sweet 16. Wisconsin faced UCLA Saturday, taking sets one, two, and three for the sweep. That means they'll host again next weekend, facing 13 seed Texas A&M at the Fieldhouse. The Packers are still all alone in first place in the NFC North with four regular season games left. That's thanks in part to Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks, who helped him out by beating the Minnesota Vikings earlier this week, 37 to 30. So the Packers still lead the Vikings by one game. The Packers host the three and nine Washington Redskins at noon, but the big one is down the road. The Packers play at the Vikings Stadium December 23rd over in Minneapolis. And switching to weather now, Dana joining us with some weather that's going to get a little bit colder. It's going to get quite a bit colder, so take advantage of today. Today we're looking at pretty mild temperatures will be above average. Still a cloudy sky outside, a little breezy also as our wind speeds are in the teens coming from the south. That southerly flow is going to help our temperatures warm up quite a bit. Uh, starting to see that wind diminish a little bit later this afternoon though as temperatures will climb to the mid 40s again take advantage of it because it is going to get much much colder outside for the middle of the week looking at the start for our work week monday is going to bring a little bit of rain and some light snow in the afternoon we won't have much accumulation but since it is going to be coming down during your commutes we do have an alert day in the forecast now for tuesday and wednesday afternoon highs are going to hold steady in the teens overnight low temperatures though will be in the single digits plan on those wind chills falling below zero to start off the day. So it's going to stay quite cool heading towards the middle of the week. Keely, uh, definitely take advantage again today in the 40s. All right, Dana, thank you for tracking all that chaotic Wisconsin winter weather. <laughs> Well, did you know the bronze statue that sits atop the Capitol's dome has a name? She's Audrey Marie Monson, and she's also is the namesake of the renovated restaurant inside the downtown Hilton. Our tastemaker takes us to the Audrey Kitchen and Bar. Here with Chef Jeff Orth at um, Inside the Hilton Madison Monona Terrace. Thank you so much for having us here today. Thank you. Um, so I I want to talk about the beautiful dishes we have on, on the table here. Um, can we start with this one? Sure. So this is the, uh, we have a red ale marinated uh, chicken wings. Ooh, red uh, ale. Yeah, uh, it helps with the color and uh, so it's, it's uh, red ale and soy sauce, uh, molasses, some other things in the marinade. Uh, we wanted to do chicken wings, they're a popular uh, thing, for snack food for people to share or eat at the bar, but we wanted to do something a little bit different, our own kind of spin on it. And we have what we call a yakitori sauce, but it's essentially, it's a um, soy sauce based, you know, a little sweet, a little bit tart right. for dipping. Oh, cool. So, mm -hmm. What do we have here? This is our soba noodle salad with the, you know, pickled shiitakes and carrots, uh, Persian cucumbers, lots of herbs mm. from our garden in a, a tamari soy uh, dressing. Oh, awesome. Yeah. And this is beautiful too and super colorful. So that's our, our hanger steak salad. Um, and with the, comes with some greens. So we've got frise and spinach and arugula in there, a little bit of uh, flowers and herbs from our garden, some crispy shallots. Um, bacon lardon and uh, blue cheese dressing. Oh, wow, so we've got like a, a French influenced dish. A kind, kind of, of yeah. Mm -hmm. Asi Asian influenced and then a-, a Sort of, yeah, who knows what this is, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Is that kind of representative of the menu you have? It here? is. One of the things we have in mind here, or that I did at least, was the, the, the traveler, business travelers and other travelers staying with us. And people eat all different kinds of ways and we get, you know, all kinds of different people. And so maybe some people want to sit down to a full meal 
Um, we have business lunches. Maybe some people just want to grab a snack. Maybe they want to sit alone, have a couple of, you know, small things and sit and work on their computer. So we, we try to offer a, a number of different ways that people can experience our food, whether it's, you know, a big spread of things to share, whether it's a, an entree to maybe just chicken wings with a beer at the bar at the end of a work day. So we have a lot of different things. And, and what that does is it doesn't nail us down to any particular style. You know, we, we brightened up the space. Yeah, this uh, is, it's gorgeous in here. It is, and lots of beautiful natural light coming yeah. in. And you guys, the bar is now over here. Mm -hmm. I saw gorgeous, and you guys have a craft cocktail program too. We do, yeah. Uh, Matthew Angelucci, who uh, uh, kind of designed our our cocktail program, uh, and they do uh, lots of really cool things. Uh, I know I've been ordering a lot of specialty ingredients for them. That, oh, really? That, that, yeah, they're not traditionally ordered uh, through you know, uh, liquor suppliers, that sort yeah. of thing. So they're doing some really cool things, nice. beautiful. Well, I can't let these sit here any longer without sure. trying one. Yeah, please. Thank you so much for having us in today. You're this welcome. looks Thank great. Thank you for coming. Yes. Well, if that story has you hungry, you are in luck. But if you're sick of cooking, we've brought in some help. Next ideas for anyone looking to cater their holiday gatherings. We'll be right back. It's a little windy outside right now, but that wind will diminish for this afternoon. Temperature wise, we're in for a really mild afternoon. We'll be above average with high temps in the mid 40s. Still mostly cloudy outside though for Monday. Light rain early in the morning mixes with light snow in the afternoon. Alert day due to the impacts during your commute and for Tuesday and Wednesday, it'll be much, much colder outside.
All right, thank you, Dana. It is a busy time of year for all of us, and if holiday cooking has you a bit stressed, we've brought in some help. The folks from Cousin Subs are back in studio this morning with a few different catering options that showcase a few winter favorites. Good morning, mm. Joe. Good morning. Um, okay, so it smells very good. Uh, everyone loves a sub, but everyone kind of has different taste preferences, and you say that you have something for everybody. Absolutely, that's what we aim to do. Uh, when you're getting together and you're celebrating with friends and family, it's, it's some of the best times in life, we just want to make that a little bit better and one of the things that makes it easy is uh, variety uh, right. when you're considering where to go for catering the two most important things are uh, ease and variety for you so you want something that's going to be simple and allow you to enjoy your party enjoy your company enjoy that part of your life and then you also want something uh, that that you want to be able to make everybody happy in the group you want to make sure that no matter what someone's dietary restrictions are or their age, they'll have something there for them. So that's what we try to do. And subs are great because it's handheld. You don't have to worry too much about utensils and things like that. And I see you have a veggie option, a lot of different options. Absolutely, yeah. And that's part of the, the benefit of the way that we do catering. You can mix and match your sandwiches if you go with our party boxes here. Um, and then, uh, so you have all the kind of options you could possibly imagine with the sandwiches. But on top of that, yeah, we do have the salads. And uh, that's, 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 you know, to, to credit for the aroma here that the beautiful <laughs> Salads. It does smell very good. <laughs> the, uh, uh, we have our macaroni and cheese uh, that come in our party mac, our party soups, dozen cookies, box lunches. So no matter what size group you have, we, we want to be able to serve those people and no matter what they what they're looking to eat we, yeah. we try to help them with that even though it says cousin subs you know yeah there's the mac and cheese soup it always starts salad. with the subs but yeah we grow from there and okay. we we're always trying to grow and evolve and make the brand better and 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 to look for different ways to uh, improve the brand and uh, different options for our guests and to find things that make them happy that's that makes us better and cooking for a large group of people is not only you know time consuming it's it also can be costly i mean do you feel like this is an affordable way to feed a big group once I, I I totally do from coming from a big family and having big Thanksgivings <laughs> and having big family get-togethers mm -hmm. it, it, it is amazingly it is amazing how, how how much simpler and the cost how much cost efficient it can be when you when you go through and do this and you're saving time like you mentioned you're saving money and and then especially during the holidays that's an important thing that everyone's trying to do so um, I, I think it, it kind of it, it checks all the boxes all right yeah. thank you always for waking up and joining us Chris Reese is gonna be very sad that he is off today he, I don't. We're leaving all of this. This this whole bounty is for you. Oh and my so, goodness. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, the, he's going to learn to come in on Sundays. Yes. Then, yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. Alert to get people to work on the weekends. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Joe. My pleasure. And you are about to take a live look over the Capitol. Dana is back with your full forecast next on News 3 Now this morning, Sunday. But first, if you have a little kid turning three soon, please let us know so we can share their picture and help them celebrate on air.
Mostly cloudy for your Sunday, but at least it's going to be mild outside. High temperatures will climb above average. Right now we're in the mid to low 30s, and for this afternoon we'll be in the mid 40s for afternoon highs. Not too bad for Sunday. Enjoy it because over the next few days it's going to get just a little snowy and very, very cold. Tomorrow we have an alert day in the forecast because we have rain in the morning that's going to transition to light snow. As you can see, this is not a big accumulation event. Around Madison, we might see up to an inch. Most of the area, though, much less than that, especially since we'll be starting with rain first. That saturated ground just doesn't pick up the snow quite as well. But it will be falling during your morning commute as rain and your evening commute as light snow. So so plan ahead. Your commutes are going to take a little longer for Monday. Mostly cloudy today with the breeze from the south. Some light rain developing at night, mainly south and east of Madison. And then early in the morning, we have scattered showers. No heavy rainfall expected, but we'll just have light rain. That'll transition over to light snow early in the afternoon and then taper off in the evening. Areas north of Madison can pick up just a little over an inch, but around Dane County, just not expecting a lot. And closer to Janesville and Beloit, minor amounts, maybe just trace amounts. No major impact. You definitely don't have to have the snow shovel on hand, but if we do have any precipitation falling during the commutes, it always takes just a little longer on the road, so I'll give yourself just a little extra time if you can again in the morning and in the evening. Today in the mid 40s for afternoon highs for Monday, we fall back just a little bit in the upper 30s, the alert day due to those travel impacts. For Tuesday and Wednesday, it gets really cold outside. High temperatures will be in the teens with our overnight lows falling to the single digits. Wind chills will be below zero, so layer up early in the day and even in the afternoon. Don't let the sunshine deceive you. It'll be cold outside. Heading into the weekend, we climb up just a little bit back to the 30s. Our next weather system will start to approach for Friday and Saturday. It seems like we'll fall into a bit of an unsettled pattern for next week. Get into the following week as a few different series of systems bring light snow and rain mixed on in and temperatures a little below average. Nothing looks to be a major accumulating event right now, but that'll be the next opportunity for some light snow that we will be keeping track of. And again, for tomorrow, you definitely don't need the snow shovels unless you're traveling well, well, well to the north of the Dells. They might pick up a little more than a few inches. So the real story here is the cold, the cold that'll be coming in tomorrow. Again, on the roads, it'll be a little slick outside, mm -hmm. uh, but we aren't expecting major travel impacts. And then then it gets cold. <laughs> right, and then a huge temperature drop from today to Wednesday. I mean, 30 Sweet. degrees. We we divide in half almost and, and lose a few digits off of that too for, okay. for Tuesday and Wednesday. All right, well, layer up everybody. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Dana. Well, there's more news ahead all day long here on News 3 Now. And then tomorrow morning, we are taking a look at how Madison's salt supply is holding up with a few weeks left in this year. But first, this is the season of giving, especially to those who need it most. Well, the man you're about to meet needs it, but for him, the holiday is not as much about opening presents as it is opening hearts. And in his case, opening letters. Gene has his story right after the break.
Finally this morning, many of us make a list of the things we want for Christmas. New toys, new gadgets, you name it. But one man in Prairie du Sac wants something very simple, something every single one of us can give him. Jamie Perez shares why this Christmas will be his most important one yet. In the White and Hiller house. Christmas is probably one of the most important holidays that we celebrate during each year. Gene Whitenhiller is ready to spend another Christmas with his wife. 40 years this coming uh, Valentine's Day. Gene has been fortunate to get many gifts in his near 72 years of life, except this year he's cherishing the gift of time. The incision was healing okay on the inside, but unfortunately it also showed a tumor growing on my pancreas. I have stage four inoperable cancer. Immediately began chemotherapy. The first one just knocked me on my rear end. It fortunately showed that it has not caused any shrinkage at all. And in fact, uh, some of the lesions on my liver where it's growing have increased in size. It's been devastating, mostly because we just retired. We're just enjoying being close to our kids now and our grandchildren. Gene started chemo in mid-August. He lost 50 pounds. It was a horrible experience. He stopped chemo three weeks ago, deciding to let nature take its course. Um, my youngest granddaughter, who's three years old, doesn't just grasp that Grandpa W is sick. Um, and he's not able to get on the floor and roll around with me anymore. And that's very difficult for me to accept. Gene's doctor says he has months left to live. We are each other's best friends. We're uh, travel buddies. We do everything together. And that's why I'm going to miss him so much when he's gone. I knew how hard that was. And I knew that he wasn't giving up. He was making the best choice for how he wanted to feel. His son Ross has gone above and beyond since he found out about his dad's diagnosis. He contacted the Packers, who sent Gene a football signed by the entire team and the coaching staff. Alex Trebek, who signed a photo and wrote him a handwritten letter of support. And now, for one final gift from everyone else, he's asking for as many Christmas cards as possible to make Gene's final days merry and bright. I've been a firefighter for 13 years. I've been with Sauk City for five. Uh, I was an EMT for six years uh, with Dane County District One. And one thing I learned from all that is sometimes you help out a complete stranger just because they asked. Even from complete strangers, your love is the best gift he could ask for to make his last Christmas the most memorable one yet. Just an over overwhelming outpouring of love and support from people that I've never met, probably never will, but but who care? Oh my goodness. If you would like to send him a Christmas card, the mailing address is here on your screen. It's also posted on our website, channel3000.com. What a heart-wrenching story. Yes. Oh my goodness. I don't even know how to lead to weather with that, no, but we've, we've had so many comments on Facebook and so many emails asking for that address. So again, you can go to the website to find that. Today, of course, a good day to head out if you need to, a mild day this afternoon. Uh, we are expecting mostly cloudy skies, so get ready for the pet walk. Siegfried and Madison, <laughs> he's going to be good. He, he looks, might need a little jacket. He might need a little jacket. He looks like a little guy. Penny should be fine. My lab should be okay. <laughs> we'll be in the mid-40s for afternoon highs today. Again, mostly cloudy skies. We have a slight chance for a shower developing later on. Uh, there is an alert day in the forecast for Monday due to some light snow coming through in the afternoon. Really won't see much accumulation. Just a bit of a hindrance for your commute. Cold for Tuesday and Wednesday. And then we rebound a little bit heading into next weekend, but it's quite a December forecast for the next 10 days. Oh, yeah, really looking like it. Thank you so much for joining us, Dana. And thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your Sunday, and you can hang out with us starting at 4.30 tomorrow.